Last week we defined a magnetic field, which, by the way, is given by the symbol B. B with an arrow over top of it. What does that mean? Then? There's an arrow over top of it? Vector. It's a vector field, right? Magnetic field given by the symbol B is defined as what? A region in which a magnetic force could be experienced by either a magnet or a ferromagnetic material. A region in which a magnetic force not necessarily is being experienced, but could be experienced by either a magnet or just a ferromagnetic material. Do you remember what that ferromagnetic material was again? When I talk about a ferromagnetic material, not a magnet, just a ferromagnetic material? It's what? Yeah, those are good examples of it, yeah. What is it? Yeah, it's something that can become magnetized. Not something that is a magnet necessarily, but something that can become magnetized. Uh, do you remember what a domain was? It's a tiny little region inside the ferromagnetic material. They're aligned when it becomes a magnet, and they're pointing in random direction when it's not a magnet. Do you remember which way that those domains point? I've got them drawn from left to right here, but do you remember what the polarity of this magnet is based on the direction of these, magne these magnetic domains? Which end is north? Which end is south? What is this? Who votes for north? Oh, you're on your own, Jack. Who votes for south? All right, everybody else. I don't know if everybody else would have voted for south <laughs> if more people had a side with you or people are just like, oh, whew. Only Jackie this must be so wrong. Um, that is the South Pole. That is the North Pole. Domains point from south to north. Which way do magnetic fields point? Well, inside the magnet, they would point in the direction of the domains from south to north. But typically, when we talk about magnetic fields, we're talking about outside the magnet, right? So we would say the direction of the magnetic field outside of the magnet would be, well, continue it around like this, continue the loop. We would say the first way is from north to south. It's like we define the direction of an electric field as from positive to negative, away from the positive toward the negative, away from the north toward the south. What's the other way that we define the direction of the magnetic field? The direction of the force on a positive particle? No, that's the electric field. The direction of the force on a... What did you guys do on Thursday? What, did you, what was the little activity you guys did on Thursday for those of you who are here or may have been here. Put the little compass in the magnetic field. We watch which way the compass needle pointed, right? So we say it's the direction that a compass needle points when placed in the magnetic field, just like it's the, the electric field is the way that a positive particle moves when placed in the magnetic field. So which way a compass points is the direction of the magnetic field, and outside of the magnet, it's from north to south. Inside of the magnet, it would be in the direction of the domains from south to north. Let's draw a couple diagrams here. Let's draw it a little bit differently, though, than we drew it, uh, than we drew it on Thursday, before the break here. I'm not going to label the polarity of this. Rather, I'm going to label, draw, draw just a simple little diagram of the magnetic field. I want you to tell me which pole is which. What's north and what's south? Left side is, Jack, south. left side is? Left side is the south. Good, because we're going away from the north and toward the south. Good. What about this one? What do you know about these two magnets based on the diagram that you see here right now? Can't tell me everything about them, but you know something about them here. Okay, we know there's a force of attraction. How do you know there's a force of attraction? Good. The field lines join up. There's a force of attraction. That means that these two poles right here, right here and right here, have got to be what? Opposite. Do we know which poles they are? Which one's north? Which one's south? No, we don't. All right. Let's... Add a little bit to this. Let's add one little arrow right there. Do we know now which one's north and which one's south? Yes. We know that this one is what? South, because the field line points toward the south. And therefore, because the field lines join up and it's got to be an attractive force, this one's got to be? South. North. south. North. North. <laughs> this one's got to be? North. Because opposite poles attract each other. What about this one? <laughs> what 
What do you know about these two magnets based on the diagram that you see here? Like poles or opposite poles? They got to be opposite, or oh, sorry, like poles. They got to be, oh, sorry, I'm just, Jack's rubbing off on me there for a second. Um, they got to be like poles, and how do we know that they got to be like poles? They're repelling, and how do we know that they're repelling each other? Because the field lines don't join up in the middle here, right? Okay, do we know what pole is which? They're like poles. They're either both north or both south. Do we know which one they are? Yes. Yes? Danny, what are they? They're both going to be south poles. Both going to be south poles. We know that because this field line points toward the, this pole of the magnet, which means that's going to be a south. And since that's a like pole, and it, we know it's a like pole because there's repulsion, because the field lines don't join up, and that's going to be south as well. This one's going to be north, this one's going to be north, and so on. Hey, we could absolutely see a question on a quiz or a test where we have diagrams drawn, even diagrams that we haven't seen before, and we have to identify poles or direction of field lines or so on and so on. Okay, um, in the end, we can determine all that by those little rules that we learned. Okay? Field lines point away from the north and toward the south, and field lines join up when they attract, and they don't join up when they repel each other. Got it? Make sense? Okay, I want to uh, move forward a little bit here now and, and draw a comparison between our magnetic fields with the gravitational fields that we learned about last year and the electric fields that we learned about in our last unit. What's the cause? What's the cause of a gravitational field? This isn't rocket science, okay? If you think in some a particular thing, you're probably right. There's no trick to this. What is it? Yeah, mass. It doesn't necessarily have to be a large mass, but if you want to have a, a strong gravitational field, yeah, it would have to be a large mass. We're just going to say that any mass, any mass causes a gravitational field. Good. Okay, what about an electric field? What causes that? A charge, an electric charge. And again, the stronger the charge, the stronger the electric field is going to be, but any electric charge generates an electric field. All right, last one. What about a magnetic field? Yeah, okay, we say the alignment of domains, or we can simplify that by saying one word. What is it when we have an alignment of domains? What do we got? We got a magnet. Right, we got a magnet. Um, a magnet causes a magnetic field, which comes from an alignment of domains. But we also learned, we're going to learn more about this in just a few minutes today, but learn a little bit about it when we started the unit last week. We also know that, a, that an electric current or moving electric charges can generate a magnetic field as well. So I'm going to put that in there, an electric current. I'll star it because we haven't really learned much about that yet. That's coming later on today. How do we define the direction of the gravitational field? Well, this one's easy. Okay, it's always toward the producer. Well, you could say it's the direction that a mass would move when placed in the field. If I put this board marker or a rock or a eraser my hand I drop it okay it's going to move downward toward the earth well that's the direction of the gravitational field right the way that the mass would move when placed in the field it's also toward the producer it's the direction of an electric field we could say away from positive toward negative it's the second way that we define it What's well, the way that a positive test particle experiences a force? We'll say the direction of the force on positive particle. Direction of the force on a mass, we could have said is our second definition for gravitational field. The direction of the force on a positive particle is the direction of the electric field. The direction of the magnetic field, again, is away from north toward the south. Okay, let's put a little star by that one. How come? 
Why did I put a little star by, by that definition, away from the north toward the south? Yeah? Yeah. We get outside of the magnet, which we're almost always looking at, almost always looking at. It's away from the north and toward the south. But if you do happen to be looking at inside the magnet, and we will touch on that later on today, then it would be um, from south to north. And the second way that we define the direction of the magnetic field, it's the direction of the force not on a positive particle, but on a compass needle. A compass needle, or we'd say the north end of a compass, because that's the way at the end you look at, right, is the, that red painted tip of the compass needle is the north end of the compass, which makes sense, right, that it's going to point toward the south if it's the north tip of a compass needle. You don't need to write any of this down. This is strengths of various magnetic fields. I just want to give you a perspective on this. By the way, we said that magnetic field is given by the symbol B. The unit for magnetic field is given by the symbol T, which stands for Tesla. And for perspective, the Earth's magnetic field, it varies. It varies quite a bit. And in fact, not only varies by location, it varies by time. Okay, you guys have probably read recently, okay, in the last, last month or two, that they're finding, scientists are finding that the Earth's magnetic field is actually decreasing. Okay, and this has been happening for years, and we've known about this for years. It's just kind of started making the news over the last couple months. It's decreasing in strength, in some cases quite dramatically, to the point where some scientists think that the Earth's magnetic field may be in the process of actually reversing. So we have the Earth's magnetic field. This way is north, right? This way is north? Well, maybe a thousand years from now, this way is south. Okay. It's happened. It happens about, on average, we have geological records to, to show this. It happens about every 250,000 years that the Earth's magnetic field reverses. We're about 500,000 years overdue for it happening. It's been about 750,000 years since it's happened. And because the strength of the Earth's magnetic field is decreasing so dramatically, some people think that it's actually, it's actually going through that process right now of reversing. Um, so, it, so it varies quite dramatically by location, and it varies by time. Ten years from now, it could be a different strength as well, although probably not dramatically different within that short period of time. Although it has happened, you know, over the past hundred years, like, you know, within some people's lifetime, it's decreased quite dramatically, quite measurably. Five times ten to the negative five Tesla. It's a weak strength. It's a weak magnetic field surrounding the Earth. And you know that, right? Because that activity you did on Thursday with the bar magnets, whenever you brought the compass near the bar magnet, it seemed like the Earth's magnetic field didn't matter anymore. Right, when you had the compass just in your hand, it pointed that way towards Calgary. But when you put it near the bar magnet, the Earth's magnetic field didn't affect the compass nearly as much as the bar magnet affected the compass. So the Earth's magnetic field is quite weak, about 10 to the minus 5. A bar magnet is about 10 to the minus 2, which means that it's about, on average, depending upon the bar magnet, about 1,000 times the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. Yeah, and that's why the compass was affected by the bar magnet way more than it was affected by the Earth on Thursday. Sunspots, I don't really care about the, the, the base of these numbers. It's, it's more the exponents that matter here. Sunspots, about 10 times the strength of a bar magnet on average. 10 to the minus 1 Tesla. An MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. Anybody ever had an MRI? Yeah? They ask you all kinds of questions, right? You have to fill out this big form, all kinds of questions. Like, like some, th some questions you think, like, what? Like, what kind of, like, things like, have you ever had shards of metal in your eye? Like, where do those come from? Well, they come from the idea that if you have, if you've ever had shards of metal in your eye for whatever reason that are ferromagnetic and they happen to still be there, 
okay, that might be a problem when you're dealing with an MRI machine that has a magnetic field strength of 15, or this would be times 10 to the positive 1 Tesla. So about 1,000 times the strength of a typical bar magnet, or a million times the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. Here's the strongest human-made magnet ever, still 10 to the 1 Tesla. Okay, we've never made a magnet stronger than that. This is what you don't want to get close to, this magnetic neutron star that has a magnetic field strength of 10 to the 11 Tesla. This is so strong that in all likelihood, if, as you approach this thing, the iron in your blood would probably be sucked out of your blood by the Earth's, sorry, by the magnetic field strength of this magnetic neutron star, which would mean that you would have no oxygen to your brain and that would be it. The good news is uh, you'd be dead long before you ever got close to this magnetic neutron star. So you really wouldn't have to worry too much about that. Um, you don't have to memorize these numbers, none of these numbers. But I'll tell you what, it is useful sometimes to have perspective. Right? We saw for a magnetic field later on in this unit, and you get something that's 10 to the 68 Tesla. Well, if you, if you, if you kind of remember the gist of these, well, you know that's wrong. Right? If you get a magnetic field strength of the Earth that's 10 to the minus 27, if you, don't rem if you don't have any idea of what it's supposed to be, then that might make sense. Right? But if you do, then you know that that answer doesn't make any sense. Right? Don't memorize these numbers, but if you remember that the Earth is really, really weak, you know what? I would, remember, I would, I would memorize that number, 10 to the minus 5 for the Earth's magnetic field. It's not like you're ever going to have to recite it, okay? But that at least, that one number gives you a baseline for, you know, you get an answer. Does your answer make sense? Okay, I wouldn't even remember the base of it. 5 times 10 to the minus 5, just 10 to the minus 5 Tesla on average, all right? Now, last thing before we start talking about electricity and magnetism I'm going to uh, tell you something now that's going to, on the first day back after Easter break, rock your world. This is going to change everything you've ever believed in. Well, not everything, but one of the most important things that you've ever believed in. It's going to turn it literally upside down. We talk about the Earth's magnetic field. I want you to remember the definition, the, both of the definitions, of the direction of magnetic field. One, the way that a compass needle points when placed in the magnetic field, right? All right, if you have a compass at the equator, which way does it point? Toward the North Pole, right? But we define the direction of the magnetic field as away from the north and toward the south. So if I have... Let me just draw a picture here. If I have the Earth, and let, let's say that there's a bar magnet inside the Earth. It's, there's not, but the magnetic field surrounding the Earth, it looks much like the magnetic field surrounding a bar magnet, right? So let's pretend for a second that there's a bar magnet in there. Really, the Earth's magnetic field is caused by this churning molten magma deep within the Earth. But let's pretend for a second that it's a bar magnet. The magnetic field is going to look like this, right? Looks like the magnetic field surrounding a bar magnet. If I'm standing at the equator, which is right here, and I've got a compass, and I point, and I, and I hold that compass, and I look at which way the needle points, it's going to point this way. Agree? It's going to point towards the North Pole, okay, where Santa Claus lives, up here in the North Pole, right? But we define the direction of the magnetic field outside of a magnet as away from the north, and toward the south. So what are we saying? What are we really saying here? Well, what we think of as, magnetically, what we think of as the North Pole isn't really the North Pole. Magnetically, it's the South Pole, and the South Pole is the North Pole. So really, we're saying that Santa Claus lives not 
in the North Pole, but rather in the South Pole. And the penguins down here don't live in the South Pole at all. Everybody said the penguins live in the South Pole. They don't. They live in the North Pole. That's why when you were six years old and you were asking for that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing or whatever, and you didn't get it, it's because your letter went to the wrong place. You addressed it to the North Pole, and Santa Claus lives in the South Pole. Listen, uh, this, this is correct. Make, geographically, okay, geographically, up here is the North Pole. Down here is the South Pole. But magnetically, this is the South Pole, and this is the North Pole. It doesn't need to change anything. If you're ever lost in the woods, you've got a compass, and you know, you got some friends with you, and you're trying to find your way. Don't say, don't say, hey, wait, I remember that time my physics teacher taught me that North Pole was really South Pole, South Pole was really North Pole, and don't do that. When we navigate, we call this up here the North Pole. It's just not really the North Pole, but it's okay if everybody calls it the same thing, right? <laughs> we could call it, we could call it Bob if we wanted to, as long as everybody called it Bob, then we'd all know what each other were talking about, right? So, although technically the Earth's magnetic field is opposite, the poles are opposite to what we think of it as, as long as we're all navigating with the same frame of reference in that the North Pole is up here and the South Pole is down here, it doesn't really matter that it's wrong if we're all under the same frame of reference. Does that make sense? Yeah, Jay? Why is it wrong? It's the way it's defined. People just were like, well, we're not sure which is this, so we'll just do it like this. Yeah, well, I, I don't know where it came from, to be honest, but in the, way, in, in the end, uh, it just comes down to the fundamental definition of the direction of the magnetic field. It's, it's away from the north toward the south. It could have been defined the other way, right? Why wasn't it? I don't know, but it could have been. In the end, the word north is just that, a word. Right? Like I say, it could have been called Bob. Right? We could have called the way that a compass needle points, we could have called that south. And we could have called the other end north, but we didn't. So because we didn't, um, we have to say that that's the south, the magnetic south pole. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have a good reason as to why it's defined that way, but that's the way it is. And if we're going to define it that way, then scientifically, I mean, it's, it's different when you're navigating or whatever, you can call it whatever you want, then... But scientifically, we have to be consistent with our definition of the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, does that make sense?